now supports containers and that is massive. I really don't like this restriction. It would be cool if I could run any container image. It combines two great concepts that is functions as a service and container images. So it cannot really be any container because zip files are not really a good format to package applications. That's huge, that's massive. It might not sound like big, but it is big. It is all about container images. Supporting containers are, is a very new thing. It was just released. I love how simple it is. AWS Lambda is probably the most commonly used functions as a service flavor of serverless computing. It is the first service that was adopted by masses and it still rules in that area. Statistically, you are likely having at least one function running as Lambda, at least if you are using AWS. Lambda is focusing on functions as a service flavor of serverless, as I already mentioned, but there are others. It could be containers as a service. And in that case, instead of packaging our applications as zip files, we would package them as container images and then let the system, let the service run it, scale it, do whatever needs to be done. So we have two flavors, but what if we combine the two? What if we could have Lambda as functions as a service, but also containers as a service. Would that make sense? Now, luckily for you, that is precisely what happened somewhere around the end of 2020, during the last reInvent event. Lambda got the support for containers. And that is great news because zip files are not really a good formats to package applications. Container images give us so much more. To begin with, they are ad hoc standard, the unwritten standard of how we package applications today. It doesn't matter really whether it's running on our laptops, in some service, in Kubernetes, or here or there. It is all about container images. And that is huge. That means that I can package my application, or function in this case, as a container, and then deploy it here or there or there or here or there, right? I can be more or less independent from the vendor. So, container images are great. Functions as a service, potentially good. I'm still not 100% sure, but containers as a service is definitely a good way forward. That's where we are going, I believe, right now. So let's take a look how we can combine the two, how we can have functions as a service with Lambda and use container images as a packaging mechanism to deploy our functions to Lambda. But before we go, hey, subscribe, subscribe right now. You get notifications for the new videos and whatever else I will do in the future in the YouTube. So subscribe right away. And then I'm gonna give you a second here or two seconds. Great. Let's explore Lambda with container images, combining container images with Lambda. Let's see what we're gonna get in 20 minutes or less. If you want to follow along and do what I'm doing, there are a few things you need to have. If you just want to watch, then you can skip through this part where I will explain what you need. So what do you need? Uh, you need AWS account. There is absolutely no, no doubt about that. You're watching AWS Lambda. So if you want to follow along, you need AWS account. You know that already. Uh, you will need a well, few more things, but few more things depends really on how you choose to proceed. You can install AWS CLI, please do it, configure it, make sure that it has everything it needs, environment variables or AWS config, and install Docker because we are going to build a container image that will be deployed to Lambda. Or, and this is a big or, you can choose arguably easier route if you don't have all those things, you can just use Gitpod. Uh, if you don't know what Gitpod is, the link is above here, there, somewhere, uh, and just follow along and learn about Gitpod because with Gitpod I will, I will give you the whole environment with everything you need to follow along. Um, install also the Chrome extension for Gitpod 
because that will give you a, the button. Anyway, watch the video. You will know what Gitpod is. And then once you watch the video, you will go to Gitpod settings and uh, create a couple of things. Create a few environment variables. You will need access key ID. You will need secret access key. And you will need default re region. That way Gitpod will know how to connect your AWS account. Assuming that you want to use Gitpod and you should because it's absolutely awesome. And another thing that you will need to do is that you will need to go and enable feature preview because that will give you support for Docker within Gitpod uh, workspaces. So please enable feature preview. Uh, that will probably not need to happen in the future when it becomes stable, but for now you need to enable it as a feature preview. And that's, I believe, everything we need. Actually, there is another thing, the most important thing. Uh, we need a demo function, and demo function that we will use is stored in a Git repository, which is vfarsic lambda container demo. Please go to that repo and uh, fork it. If you don't know how to get to that repo, hey, uh, the links to gist with all the other links and addresses is in the comments, it's in the description section of this video. So go there, you will find the link to the gist that contains, among other things, this repo. Once you open the repo, please fork it. Fork it right away by clicking this button, fork. And then choose the organization where you want to fork it and wait for five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, go. There we are. Now your repo is forked and this is the last action before we start exploring Lambda. You click the Git pod button. Click this button, Git pod, because that will give you the workspace that we will need with the CLI installed, configured, with Docker uh, already up and running and everything we will need for the exercises. That's it. Now we can start exploring AWS Lambda based on container images as a packaging mechanism for our functions. Let's go. Now we can create container image, test it locally. We should always test locally. Why would we deploy something to real servers if we are not sure that it works or at least confident? And then once we tested them locally, we will push them to registry, and from there on, we can create a Lambda function based on container image. And you can already see a couple of advantages. We can test that image locally, remotely. We can deploy it as Lambda function, or we can run it in any other way. It's a container image. It's not a normal container image. It will be, you will see later. Anyways, the first step is to uh, see the, actually, not the first step. Let's take a look, quick look at the source code of the application, of the function. This is probably going to be the smallest source code you will ever see. It's a simple function, it's a demo function, don't freak out. It's written in Go, but don't be worried, I'm not teaching you how to write functions, but how to deploy, how to test function, how to, to run them locally. So it takes name as the input, and then it outputs that name, and then please visit the DevOps Toolkit series channel and subscribe. And this is opportunity. Hey, subscribe. Uh, anyways, that's a simple function, nothing really special. The only other thing that we need, ex except apart from the source code of the function, is Docker file that we will use to build container image. And this is multi-stage Docker, Docker build. And uh, the first stage, the first image is based on Golang because it's a Go, it's a function written in Go. It will build it and uh, actually it, it will build it here and that's about it. And then the second and the last stage, the stage of the final image is based on Lambda Go from the public ECR uh, AWS registry. That is the base image that enables us to run our binaries, our code as Lambda function. Uh, let's take a look actually at, that, as, at those images. We can do that easily by opening, uh, what's the address? Gallery. Um, ecr.aws. I will post the link uh, in the in the gist. So this is the public AWS registry for container images. And if you search for Lambda, we can see that we have base images for .NET, Go, Java, Node.js, Python, and so on and so forth. All supported languages with Lambda. We don't have to use those base images. We could create our own base image. But that would complicate things because it cannot be just anything. It needs to be an image that has all the constructs that enable Lambda functions. So think of this as 
a limitation. We cannot run just any container image as Lambda function. It needs to have all the bits and pieces that make Lambda functions Lambda functions. So it cannot really be any container. That's right. That, that's not really ideal. But still, considering that we are talking about Lambda functions and not general container as a service, it's a good thing. So uh, we choose a base image. And in my case, I chose what they chose Lambda Go because it's Go based uh, a function application. So that's about it. Let me close this. Let me make the terminal bigger and close the files because we don't need them anymore. So the first thing we need to do is to build a container image. You almost certainly know how to do that. So let's not spend too much time Docker image build. We want to tag it as Lambda uh, container demo and let it be release 001. And we need to always specify the context where Docker file and the source code is. And that's PWD, which is current directory. And now it is building container images. It is multi-stage, so it is pulling the, the base image for uh, building uh, something, building binaries with Go. It shouldn't take long. It's almost there. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Okay, now it is doing the actual work of building. Uh, it is copying the source code. Next, it will build the binary. Actually, it is downloading the dependent uh, libraries. In this case, uh, Lambda dependencies. And now it is building the binary. No, it is still not. It is still downloading the dependencies. Anyway, it needs to be still, it needs to follow all the rules of Lambdas. Just at this time, it is in near container. Okay, it built. It is building the binary, and after that, it will start executing, creating the second image, the final image that will contain that binary and be based on Lambda uh, Go official base image. This image is on a big size, but so we might need to wait a bit. It's already downloaded actually, so it's relatively fast. It is extracting it. Few more moment, moments. Let's fast forward. I'm getting bored. Okay, there we are. It copied the binary from the first stage and now it should create what it should create. It should create the command, I think, is the last instruction. Yes, command is to execute the binary. Great. Now we have our container image and before we create the function, there are a couple of things we need to do. And before the couple of things we need to do, uh, we might want to test it locally. And it is container image and we can do that. We can test it locally relatively easily, just like not like any container image, it needs to follow certain rules, you will see that later, but almost like any container image. So docker container run, and we want to publish, we will make uh, port 9000, uh, expose the container on port 9000, and that will be forwarded to the internal port 8080. And uh, the name of the container image we want to run is lambda container uh, demo, uh, 001, if I remember correctly. So now this container will start running soon in foreground. So I will start a new terminal. Here it is asking me whether I should make it public. I don't want to make it public because this is only for internal purposes. And then uh, I'm going to send a request to the function and see whether it works. Let's see, I can do that with CURL. I need to use this address. Now this is a bit Silly, uh, it needs to follow a certain format, uh, and that is localhost uh, port 9000 because that's where it's running, and then uh, the date 2015 or 331 functions, function invocations. Same rules as Lambda functions. I really don't like this restriction. It would be cool if I could run any container image with the parts that I specify, but hey, this is Lambda, this is not uh, general container as a service uh, type of stuff. And I'm going to specify payload, which will be, what was it? Name should be Victor, for example. And I'm going to output that and do an echo to add an empty line at the, at the bottom. So if this works, if the function running locally as a container right now works, I should see Victor and then please visit, uh, and there we are, please visit the YouTube channel and subscribe. So I just tested the function locally. And uh, let's say that I, that 
now we are finished that I confirmed that it works as I as it should be working and uh, we can deploy it to as a, as a lambda lambda function so let's exit this and stop the docker um, container from running we don't need it anymore we just establish that it works now before we create a function we should store that image somewhere we cannot keep it locally because lambda functions would not be able to use local images so i'm going to i need to push it to some container registry and since we are using gws let's use ecr elastic container registry since i don't have one i did not do anything in advance we are going to create a new registry for this uh, function so aws ecr create repository and the repository name should be let's call it the same as function lambda container demo and we might want to specify image scanning configuration uh, configuration uh, to be scan on push through we're going to enable scanning images when they're pushed and uh, there we are the registry is created now we have a place to push the image so that it is accessible as a function before we proceed i'm going to create an environment variable uh, repo uri i think yuri and i'm going to store the output from uh, the previous command as the as the uri <laughs> anyway and so that we can use it for later i don't want to remember that long string so there is one more thing uh, we need to do before we push the image we need to uh, enable docker to be able to push uh, the image that means that we need to authenticate it with the newly created ecr registry so what we're going to do is to output the password so aws ecr get login uh, password and we're going to pipe that into docker login command where the username is the is aws that's the default username and the password will be from std input and finally the address of the registry is whatever is in repo yuri uh, variable and if i didn't make a mistake there we are now local docker engine is authenticated and it can push the push the images we created but we cannot push yet uh, we build the image called uh, what is it called lambda container demo we need to tag it with uh, the whole address of the registry so docker image tag lambda container uh, demo which is 001 and we want to tag it as whatever is the repo yuri and as 001 as well now i like also uh, having a version of the image as with specific tag like 001 but also as latest so that people don't need to think too much when doing local development in production always with explicit tags so now we are ready to push the image let's do that docker image push to whatever is repo yuri and what was it 001 it will take a while until it is pushed or maybe not that much few more seconds come on now the problem is that the base image is like one of the layers is 650 megabytes i think in total is is bigger we're going to check now how big is that image that would be interesting to see as a matter of fact uh, but yeah let's let's wait until it is pushed first that will be like a tiny experiment and i'm going to put the, push the second tag as well the latest this should be much faster because all the layers already exist now a quick detour let's take a look at the images we have so this uh, whole image that we build is 679 megabytes this is a downside of what we are doing right now because the binary we built is probably like uh, 10 megabytes excluding not counting uh, the the library lambda library that needs to be used in the code of a function so lambda itself is like 670 megabytes so everything that lambda needs is over half a giga uh, six, oh, 670 megabytes more or less 
that's huge, that's massive. It might not sound like big, but it is big. Those are either, uh, either lambda needs too much or the base images are not really optimized. But anyway, happy thoughts, happy thoughts. Uh, where was I now? I forgot. Uh, yes, let's create lambda function. Now, we can do it in different ways. We can do it through CLI, which is always my preference. Actually, my second preference. My first preference is to define it all as declar in declarative format as code, push it to Git repository, hook it into some pipelines or some GitOps type of tools that will do the work, but we're not going to do that. It would be too much, too much of a detour. Uh, we could do it through CLI, but uh, Lambda supporting containers are, is a very new thing. It was just released. So there are a few things missing from the CLI. So we are going to do what I don't like doing. But hey, if you're a beginner, actually, that might be the best thing for you to do. We are going to do whatever we need to do from the console. So let's go to uh, to console and uh, deploy the Lambda function. So console of AWS, where is it? Console. Oh, I cannot type today. Console. Console. There we are. This is Lambda U, uh, sorry, AWS UI. So we're going to search for Lambda. There we are, Lambda. So we're going to select create function like we would create any other function and select container image. And this is new. This was just released somewhere in November, December, I think. Yeah, during the last reinvent. And we need to type a name of the function that will be Lambda container demo, same like the image. And then we need to select the image we want to use as Lambda function. And here is the registry that we created earlier. And we are going to select the image that here we have, select image. There we are. Now, do, should we do something else? Let's see the change default execution role. I'm going to create a new role with basic Lambda uh, permissions. Why not? Sounds reasonable. And there, and there is a button you cannot see. So let me move on the other side. Here we are. Uh, there is a button, create function, that we are going to click here. It should take a few moments until the function is created. Come on, go, 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 go. And here we are. There's the Lambda function that we were looking for. So what else we should do? We should test it, but we cannot test it right away. Now, now we can test it. You see how it changed here from blue to green? Uh, it is deployed. Function is available now, and we can execute test and check whether it really works. So even template uh, doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to type, type the name. What should be the name? Um, test, right? And the payload, if you, uh, as you remember from before, is name and some value. Let's say John Doe. And we don't need the other uh, other two. And here we are. Oh, you don't see the button again. Create, right? There is an error in JSON. I didn't remove the comma here. There we are. And we can create it. Now we created the test definition. And now if we click test, it should work. Let's see. Yeah, there we are. Uh, the execution results succeeded. We can see the logs. We can see the details. All the good stuff. Excellent. Now, there is one more thing that we might need to do before we uh, say that this is function that works. We should probably create a trigger. A trigger so that it is accessible from outside, for example. So add trigger. We need to select a trigger. I'm going to choose today API Gateway. The, which will make it accessible from for uh, from outside, and uh, then we click endpoint. It will be HTTP, right? Or API, yeah. Create an HTTP API. Why not? And uh, that's about it. Security. Let's see the security. Yes. Let's make it open. And that should be it. Now we can click add, and it should have the gateway. What else? Now, um, let's go back to the terminal uh, and see whether it really works. Where is the terminal? Here is the terminal. And we should uh, test it locally against the real Lambda, not anymore against uh, local uh, execution of the container. So I'm going to create a variable payload that will be what it will be. Um, it will be echo. We're going to use the JSON from before, which is uh, name. And then uh, what should I write? Victor, why not? 
and that's the that's the the JSON we want to send, but it needs to be base64 encoded. So we're going to pipe it to base64 and store the result in payload. And now we can say AWS Lambda invoke. We want to invoke Lambda and the function name is Lambda container demo. And then the payload is whatever is in payload variable and we're going to store the response in response JSON. So let's see whether it works. Yes, yeah, status code 200, uh, it was successful, it works. It, we are successful. Now to be on a safe side, we can uh, take a look at JSON that was generated with the response. Here we are, response JSON and add an extra, extra empty line at the bottom, and we can see the output of the function itself, which is, Victor, please visit the YouTube channel and subscribe. And that's about it. That's all there is. I mean, there is, that's not all there is. There is much more. There are many, many things we can do with Lambda, especially in connection with other functions and how they interoperate and what's not. But from the perspective of running containers, that's all there is. We were successful in creating Lambda function based on container images. So you saw it. Lambda now supports containers and that is massive. It might not seem like that, but it is for a simple reason, because container images are the de facto standard for packaging our applications. It simplifies local development, it simplifies local testing, and it gives us universal format to deploy stuff in this case to Lambda, but theoretically anywhere else. So it is very simple and effective. I lo love, I love how simple it is. Now, of course, things can get complicated depending on how complex system we create, but generally speaking, it is simple and effective. It combines two great concepts, that is functions as a service and container images. Now, this is, I cannot call this container as a service, it would be great if it would be container as a service as well, then it would cover all variations of serverless, but it's not because it needs to have Lambda constructs in the container. So it cannot be just any container, it can be, it must be containers based on Lambda images or created with all the bits and pieces that Lambda needs. But if you're talking about con uh, functions as a service, it is using container images is just amazing. And especially, and this is important part, if we understand that previous deployment uh, packaging mechanism actually was zip file. Who packages applications in zips today? That's just silly. Anyways, great addition. Are there potential problems with that? Depends how you look at it. If we look at it from the perspective of functions as a service, and if if we ignore that the size of images is a bit on a big size, that actually that's the most problematic part. Images are relatively big. But that aside, it's more or less great. Now, what I don't like is functions as a service itself. It's a single instance for requests. So every single request we create is a single instance. Now containers give us that flexibility as we saw with similar services that we can have a container instance that serves one request or 1000 requests and scales based on uh, the needs of our applications, of our functions. I'm not sure that I'm fully into one instance per request model, but it really depends on what you're trying to do. If it's a function, it works pretty well. Um, what else? It is about functions. At the end of the day, it is about functions. And I made the mistake of thinking that this is container as a service. It's not. It just functions as a service or serverless functions as serverless flavor, which supports now container images. And if you look at it as such, this is absolutely awesome. This is great. Is there anything else left to say? I'm not sure. Nothing really. Use it. If you use Lambda, switch to container images. It's a good thing. Um, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click the like button, like button. Like it, like it, like it. it you should do that. Um, what else? 
yes, if you want to support the channel, there are some books and courses you might want to purchase. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching. See you next time.